Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Watchbox, and thanks for logging on. If you love this watch, email me, tmasso at thewatchbox.com. It's in the description below. Your purchase and pricing email question line for buying this or any watch you see on any Watchbox platform. Please reach out to me directly. Email tmasso at thewatchbox.com for pricing. Today, we are discussing one of the best anniversary models ever launched, not just by Patek Philippe, but by any brand ever. For 2014, the 175th anniversary of Patek Philippe, this watch, the World Time Moon Phase, was delivered in 1,300 examples, and they rarely come up for sale. This is the reference 5575G001, and it is one of the most gracefully poetic watches Patek has ever made. In white gold, properly speaking, gray gold, the watch is 39.8 millimeters in diameter, 9.7 millimeters thick, and from lug tip to lug tip, it's 45.3 millimeters with a 21 millimeter spacing between the lugs. It's actually quite large at almost 40 millimeters in diameter, but being so short across the wrist, it's suitable for women as well. Now, there was a ladies' reference, 7175, that was 38 millimeters with gems and rose gold. This is just 39.8. If you're a lady who's into high horology, you're probably going to find this to be a more appealing prospect since the two watches wear almost the same. And on my 16 centimeter circumference wrist, you can see just how short this watch is across the wrist. It's nowhere near either edge of my wrist. It is low enough to fit underneath the cuff. No issues there. And then down the barrel, you can see how far each set of lugs is from the edge of my wrist. It's a really solid watch and memorably beautiful, whether on the wrist or off. We have here a Patek Philippe factory strap, large rectangular scale alligator leather, gloss finish, we have a monotone stitch, we have sheer cut side, and then we have calfskin on the bottom, no crimping, no gouging, brand new strap, and of course it's the latest from Patek with the pull tab spring bars, you can remove the strap without tools. We have a matching white gold or gray gold buckle, you can see polished, single fold, and then custom, as this is unique to the 175th anniversary series. 1839 to 2014, and you will notice that they have doubled up as the same signature sits on the reverse side of the case. All right, rolling over to the case, you can see that this is very different from the 5130. This is a completely unique case only ever used on this anniversary model. It is gray gold, which is an 18 karat white gold that never needs to be rhodium plated. It's the good stuff. It's what Patek uses. It's what Grubel 4C uses. JLC uses it. Rolex uses it. It's the kind that is the same color straight through. The contours of this case are incredible. We have almost what Omega would describe as liar style lugs that bevel inward and then twist outward. You can see that the mid case is defined by an undulating seam between the top and the bottom of the case profile. And then we have a bezel that stepped in rather dramatically to visually thin the case and then it's concave in profile before flattening out as it's adjacent to the crystal. Underneath the crystal, again, the watch looks familiar, but it is not in any way related to the 5130. What you've got here is a dedicated dial, starting with the hour ring, outboard, well, I suppose we should say the 24-hour reference set, as these are 24 cities representing the 24 principal time zones of the world. This is the Louis Cotier system, first devised by the watchmaker in the 1930s, initially picked up by Patek and Vacheron and used ever since. So you have 24 reference cities outboard. You set your current reference city at 12 o'clock. That's the way this works. Then you have a little push adjuster. So if I am in Cairo right now and it is 8 in the morning and you know it's 8 in the morning because we have this little circular reference ring and 8 is adjacent to Cairo. Now, if it said 20, we would know that it's 8 p.m. But we can see that Cairo, our reference city, is 8 a.m. Now I'm going to travel. I'm going to visit the watch box Hong Kong store. Now the watch has done the work for me, and I can see it is 2 p.m. in Hong Kong, but I can also see the time everywhere else. It's 9 o'clock in the morning in Riyadh. I could see that it is midnight in Mexico, and I could see that in New York City, it's 1 a.m. The watch does the math just like that. And you have this little reference ring with 24 hours. It's one half silver, one half blue. The two semicircles indicate approximately where it is day and night. Now, if I want to make adjustments to this system, I can do so without actually stepping and moving the cities. Because this is the Patek Philippe anniversary watch, we do have Geneva 
in place of Paris for European Central Time right there. So Geneva takes the place of Paris right there. And then the Guilloche center dial of the 5130 is replaced by a lush and lovely crescent-style moon phase. You can see the moon phase is actually one of the photorealistic moons. And then you can see there's a bunch of stars underneath with a couple of constellations depicted. And we have an hour hand that is inspired by Crux, the Southern Cross constellation. That's where that design comes from. The little hour indices on the center dial and the hands are made of white gold. Under the reverse side, you get caliber 240 HU for Heure Universelle and LU for Lunaire. So we have our moon phase and our world time. And we have an automatic winding micro rotor automatic with a 48 hour power reserve. It beats away at 21,600 vibrations per hour. It is adjusted in six positions, not the chronometer standard of five, but six. It's free sprung for durability and precise adjustment. It has an anti-magnetic silicon hairspring. It has the world time complication. It has the moon phase complication. It pivots on 35 joules and it has 30 meters of water resistance within this case. Now you will note that there are some marks on this watch. Not large, not to point that the watch is disfigured in any way, but you can see that there are little marks that the watch has been worn. This watch has not been refinished, nor will it be refinished in our hands. You can see on the reverse side, there's a little nip on the reverse, and then there is some marks, some scratches and swirls of a light and shallow nature around the case. I always want to make sure that we're straight on that before we talk about selling a watch to a customer. This is a watch that is, as it came from the factory, unrefinished, unpolished. It's the way I like my watches, and it's the way this one will be delivered unless specifically requested otherwise. Reach out to tmaso at thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing details.